going on, Stellar Crew? Bob MacArthur here for Stellar View Telescopes for this month's edition of In the Sky, May 2024. I got my SVX 152T out here. It's still galaxy season, so let's talk about what we got in the sky for this month. All right, Stellar Crew, what's going on? Let's do it. Let's talk about what we got for In the Sky, May 2024. So this month's observing highlights, kind of starting at uh, the beginning of the month, we have the waning crescent moon in the morning, uh, starting with Saturn and then kind of skipping from Saturn to going in between Saturn and Mars, and then going uh, between Mars and Mercury, and then we have the new moon. So uh, yeah, fun little pre-sunrise show. May 5th uh, is the Eta Aquarius peak. Uh, you'll be able to catch some good uh, meteors the days before and the days after. So it's a great meteor shower. So this is actually one of the meteor showers caused by Halley's Comet. As Halley's Comet orbits the sun, leaves that debris trail, Earth passes through it, and we get that meteor shower. And then May 14th, I'm excited for this one. The moon is jumping in there with M44, the beehive cluster. Uh, that's going to make a great pairing to, to view. So get out there and check it out. The near full moon on the 23rd is near Antares. Uh, it's always a fun little pairing to see that kind of reddish uh, orange Antares right next to that bright moon. And uh, actually for viewers in the southeastern United States, you're going to be able to see an occultation where the moon is actually going to pass in front of Antares and cover it up. So uh, that'll be a fun show for y'all. And then on May 31st, the waning crescent moon is near Saturn. Uh, I think it's about a degree, less than a degree, depending on where you are. But uh, seeing that crescent moon pair up with Saturn is, uh, is fun. So the planets are really starting to show up in the morning. Speaking of the planets, let's talk about the solar system. The sun is lit right now. As, uh, you know, haha. Um, no, the sun is really active right now. So many solar flares, M-class solar flares, X-class solar flares. Uh, actually, with all the increased solar activity, if you live in the uh, northern tier states, southern Canada, you could have that really good chance of seeing the auroras. I know super high latitudes, uh, it's getting a little too daylight out and um, chances of seeing the auroras are getting lower and lower. If you are in the southern hemisphere, um, the aurora australis it can be a possibility too. So we're talking like Tasmania, South Island of New Zealand. Um, great chance of seeing the aurora australis as you all are heading into winter in the southern hemisphere. So spaceweather.com is a great website to see what's going on with the sun. The moon, there you go. May 8th is the new moon. And uh, that's your, that's when you get out to your dark sky site and enjoy those, uh, those wonderful dark skies. And uh, yeah, get out there, check it out, new moon weekend. Full moon, there it is, May 23rd. Uh, yeah, so plan accordingly for your observation sessions, I guess. And the solar system. So yeah, the planets are making their, their, their show in the morning. We have Saturn, we have Mars, and we have Mercury. We also have asteroid 2 Pallas um, at opposition, meaning um, it's up all night. And I kind of like trying to shoot out those, uh, those asteroids. They're kind of fun to spot and, uh, and, and hunt for, especially some of the, the bigger, brighter ones. So check out that. Now, Comet Ponds Brooks, Northern Hemisphere, we're done. Uh, Southern Hemisphere, that's, uh, that's where Comet Ponds Brooks is going to be putting on the show. You know, I love the website, theskylive.com. This is a good website to find out what asteroids are visible, what comets are visible, and where they are in the sky. So definitely check out the, the, the skylive.com. Now, the picture we have up here, this is our solar eclipse winner, uh, Dan Foles. He got it. Look at that image using his SVX-102T. Great shots seeing the solar corona there. Oh, look at that. And then if you look around the edges, you got the prominences. So great, great, great job there, Dan, getting the solar eclipse. And uh, congratulations on winning the uh, solar eclipse con uh, contest. So there you go. We had a, a lot of really good submissions. So thanks for getting those uh, images into us, y'all. So let's talk about star clusters. Um, you know, I'm not going to leave my southern hemisphere uh, friends uh, out of the game here. It is a great time to try and spot Omega Centauri. Um, obviously, southern hemisphere, equatorial skies, you're really going to get Omega Centauri a lot better than uh, us up here in the northern hemisphere. I have been able to spot it really low on the horizon here in Colorado, um, especially kind of in like central and southern Colorado. Arizona, I've been able to get it in Arizona. Hawaii definitely gets Omega Centauri. Uh, but again, southern hemisphere, get this thing. It is an amazing 
globular star cluster. Some research says it actually could be um, a, a remnants of a dwarf galaxy that is orbiting our galaxy. So hmm, check it out. It is beautiful through a telescope. I actually did get to see it uh, really good in Rwanda and it was up there high. You could see it in naked eye. It's a cool, cool cluster to check out. Uh, but M44, again, you know, we got that meeting up with the moon. Great uh, open star cluster. And we have M67 still up there in, uh, in Cancer. Uh, got some great globulars, M3, M5. And I, uh, I really enjoy looking at globulars through my scopes. Um, my 152 really just brings out the, the, the stars and they pop. So it, it, we've got some good globulars coming up for sure. Nebula this time of year, you know, we're, it's galaxy season. That's what we like to look at this time of year. But we got a few nebula up there, a lot of really neat uh, uh, planetaries. And some of those summer uh, nebula are starting to pop up. That's why I threw M57 in there uh, in Lyra. It's uh, the Ring Nebula is one of my favorite planetaries to look at. Um, and it's bright, so you can get some good detail in it, things like that. The Owl is a really uh, a fun one too. And it's high in the sky right now because it's, uh, it's kind of in the bowl of the Big Dipper. And again, got my Southern Hemisphere friends there. We have uh, the Triantula Nebula and the Large Magellanic Cloud. Um, it's one of those things on my uh, 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 astronomy bucket list is to see the Triantula Nebula. It's, uh, uh, I, can't, I, I can't wait to see that. So if you're down there in the Southern Hemisphere, turn your scopes to it, check it out. If you get down to the Southern Hemisphere, check it out. Um, but yeah, a lot of great planetaries. And like I said, we are starting to enter into the summer months, which uh, means we're going to get into the Milky Way a little bit more. But before then, we still have galaxy season going on. So Virgo, Leo, Ursa Major, Coma Bernices, all of them. It is great galaxy season, galaxy hunting time. Um, you, know, you got, you got the, the Virgo cluster, M87, M104, the Sombrero Galaxy. You got the Leo triplet, M65, M66, the Hamburger Galaxy, NGC 3628, plus some other galaxies there in Leo. Ursa Major, the Big Dipper, just is littered with galaxies. Um, and then, of course, got some really cool uh, galaxies over there in Coma, the Coma Cluster. My favorite, personally, is NGC 4565. Um, it is a really nice edge-on spiral galaxy. So get out there, check them out. And I just listed a few. I mean, there are so many. Um, what are some of your favorites? Uh, yeah, throw those up. Let, let, let us know. Let's see. What are some of your favorite galaxies to hunt this time of year? I always like picking out some binaries. I think refractors do a great job getting that, that separation, the colors. So let's get to it. We've got Kuma up there, a new Draconis. Nice pairing. Um, about the same brightness, about the same color. So check that one out. We have um, Delta Corvi. This one, this one's fun. It's challenging because you have a brighter primary and a kind of a, a, a fainter orangish uh, uh, companion star. So get in there and check that one out. We have um, Delta Serpents. Um, this one is, is fun. They are a very, very tight pair. So uh, you're seeing will d dictate whether or not you can separate this one. And then we also have my favorite out of the group, Alpha Hercules. Um, I really like this one. You have a really nice reddish orange primary and then a fainter blue uh, companion star. So uh, check check that one out. So some great binaries. You know, let us know some of your favorites and uh, what are some of your favorite binary stars to look at this time of year. So the weather's getting warmer. It's May. Ah, I, I love spring. Sometimes the weather can be a little crazy, but it is getting warmer out there. We can uh, enjoy galaxy season. If you stay up long enough, you can start getting those summer constellations for our, uh, for our summer viewing with the Milky Way. But you know, as always, get out there, get your scopes out, and keep looking up.